Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about our pilots, uh, our offsetting pilots that we are calling Springer Compact. And uh, yeah, I would like uh, to uh, yeah, maybe mention very briefly in the beginning that you know about yeah ten years ago we started with the launch of Open Choice, kind of introducing uh, the subscription journals to the hybrid world, and uh, ten years later now we uh, thought to uh, offer. Springer Compact as a pilot, as a uh, yeah, revolutionary offsetting model, which really looks into the future in the transition to uh, gold open access, uh, coming from the idea that uh, open access, gold open access, um, is um, growing um, over proportionally, and it is a route to gold open access. Having this said, uh, the way to pure gold open access, I think, still uh, will take a while, and therefore our Springer Compact um, is also uh, designed uh, to last for quite some time when uh, there are hybrid journals around. But uh, let's move uh, um, a little bit further and see, um, um, you know, what were our intentions in terms of. Uh, on our um, Springer Compact deal. I've said already <coughs> the transition to pure gold open access. Absolutely. Um, a big uh, intention to it. Increase the visibility um, and uh, the yeah, accessibility of the works of the Springer authors. I think also not, nothing uh, too uh, new. What was also important to us was that, uh, of course, because we are uh, publishing still some subscription journals, and as I mentioned, hybrid journals, it was also important for us uh, that uh, our, uh, re as researchers and customers, can in this uh, new Springer Compact deal uh, have and continue to enjoy the access to all of our hybrid uh, subscription journals to the so-called closed content. So that was also very important, that it is sustainable in that way, uh, that the access to the subscription articles is also guaranteed. And uh, yeah, what was mentioned before, we wanted to create something which is transparent, uh, affordable. Uh, we also uh, wanted to um, create something which is as simple as possible uh, in uh, terms of the business model and in terms of the administration. And, uh, yeah, and on, uh, kind of connected with this um, is the wish to increase efficiency when it comes to the administration of uh, APCs and uh, open access publishing in our hybrid journals. Yeah, why did we think um, uh, we should do that? Yeah, we feel that we are a trendsetter in open access publishing, and I think two sides are important for our model to mention also, is on the one hand that we enjoy um, a good relationship uh, to our authors in all different kinds of disciplines. I think that's what I um, would like to mention. So we are covering uh, the whole yeah, umbrella of SDM, and uh, uh, our Springer Compact model takes this under account, uh, that there are differences in principle in the fields, also in terms of the uptake of open access. But we wanted to come up with a, a model that works across the board. So a uh, good relationship uh, to authors in all different kinds of fields. And then and, uh, we also are interested <coughs> in principle in thinking big so we feel uh, that we are in a place where we could create a workflow um, that you know, works for quite a few journals. <laughs> Actually, we are having close to 60, uh, 1,700 hybrid journals, over 2,000 journals altogether, but over uh, close to 1,700 hybrid journals, so many journals. And then, of course, also uh, thinking big in terms of having quite a few partners 
uh, connected to this business model. Yeah, and we are used to piloting, taking some risks. I think it was mentioned before, um, you know, having the attitude to try something out, take it from there and continue to develop it further. So what am I talking about? Uh, yeah, this is now uh, Springer Compact. As you can see, it's very simple. It's basically two circles uh, that are uh, put together in one big circle. So uh, really taking a holistic approach, uh, combining the publishing and the accessing of the content in one model. And what the key part of this is that we basically don't come from the past in terms of the subscription and the access and the licensing model, but really put the publishing first. So uh, the key part of it is uh, the um, funding and the financing of the research uh, in our Springer Compact model. And then, of course, hand in hand goes accessing all the content that is available on our Springer Link platform, in our Springer uh, journals, or, uh, partner journals that we co-publish with societies. One key point is also that um, we consider it very important that we uh, entertain this good relationships not only uh, with the authors and the libraries, but really start to create strong relationships with all different kinds of funders that are part um, yeah, of the whole universe of these kind of um, deals. I just would like to uh, stress this one more time because it is so important, and this is also one of the items that is yeah, a big challenge, a concern, is really to create a good workflow. And we are talking about administrational costs, administrational burdens that is on the side of the institutes. But what, of course, is also very, very key is from an author point of view that the author has a very yeah, pleasant, easy, and um, yeah, a good experience while publishing with Springer. And you know, this is just a short um, graph that basically shows the publishing process. And I would like to uh, mention one aspect here, and this is um, a, a challenge, and I will come to this in the end um, when I talk about the conclusion and the challenges. So of course, this verification process um, of an author belonging to a certain institution being part of that deal um, needs to be built you know, very streamlined, very easy, and also foolproof and, and quick. And for example, one of the concerns that is here that, um, uh, that the time to publication could potentially be prolonged through the verification process. And we want to, of course, keep that as short as possible. And therefore, some kind of automated recognition, various you know, options, how we can do that IP, email, uh, naming of the institute, etc., is, is very, very key to uh, put in place. And uh, yeah, just um, you know, as an um, as important fact, this, the smooth and easy experience public, in the publication process for the author. So what are the principles of Springer Compact? Well, the principles, I said, you know, are um, fairly easy and fairly simple. And um, we are basically, as I said, we start from thinking about publishing open access. And uh, therefore, the business model starts in thinking, you know, how much is needed in terms of um, and, uh, covering the publishing fees. And uh, the publishing fees for, I think, 99 Five percent of uh, Springer Hybrid uh, journals is 2,200 euro. So that is one aspect <coughs> of it. We are looking at this APC. We do not discount this APC, and is one and the same for all journals at this point in the um, in in the deals. We basically offset these publishing costs against the licensing fee. And uh, you, uh, in that deal, you will see you have an extra um, accessing fee or platform fee, um, how we call it, to uh, guarantee 
uh, the you know uh, that users have the benefits of the features and the access uh, to all the journals of the Springer Link platform. So we come from the publishing side, very simple 2,200 non-discounted APC, and take it from there. Having this said, it's very simple, it's some kind of basic principles, but it is true, and this is also certainly a lesson learned when um, you know we now uh, dealt with establishing these pilots, is that the needs of our partners and we are uh, now basically talking with four. One, of course, is in, in place already in the Netherlands. In October, uh, we will start with, um, uh, here with Trisk in, in the UK. We'll start uh, later this year uh, in Germany and next year in, in Austria. The needs are different, and the partners are organized different, and it is and always some kind of a complexity, but the complexities are, uh, are very, very much depending on uh, whom you talk to and what are also the interests of the individual partners within a consortia. So that it's not always the same. So yes, we have s principles that we try to keep. We want to also try it, uh, to keep it simple, but it is true that we need to be flexible, and we are flexible in then setting up the individual deals to make them work uh, in the interest of all of uh, the partners. And uh, yeah, uh, what is also an underlying assumption is uh, yeah, shifts of budgets is necessary. Funders need to get into uh, the play, and I think one of the key challenges is is getting all different kinds of um, um, budgeting pots together, synchronized, in order to make this simple um, Springer Compact um, agreement work in an efficient way. What is also a key goal is we're assuming that you know the number of article uh, output is still growing and the, and the deal should basically allow for that or the setting up of the deal allows for that and that actually um, touches on one of the biggest challenges in uh, setting up these agreements is the assessment or the anticipation how much actually will be published. And um, that is also one reason why we are talking about including all the journals and including um, uh, partners that um, in principle are large partners and not on individual institutional a uh, level um, because we need to talk about a substantial uh, number of articles. It's so difficult to predict the number of articles uh, that are being published, and if you get too small, it is even more difficult because uh, you, yeah, you have a, a, a smaller leeway. Yeah, I mentioned already before, success is of course lies in the, in the workflows, in the transparency, in the administration of it. So that's the business model I've mentioned already. It's very, very simple. You basically, you have a publishing fee that covers all the articles that are being published, and that's the bigger part uh, of the fee, and then you have an access fee or a platform fee uh, that uh, you know, um, allows and guarantees the continuous access uh, of Springerlink. So very, very simple. It's not more to it. That's the basis of uh, what we deal. I like not to go into the detail of the workflow, but I wanted to bring up this um, again also visually because this is a challenge. Really making a smooth workflow and a smooth workflow on the side of the author and the submission process and the verification process, etc. And then also a challenge, but I don't see that as difficult as the reporting. Um, and I'm saying I don't see that as difficult. It's just looking into our uh, systems uh, the verification process within the production process just touches on, uh, on so many more systems. And uh, there is also a fact, and this is a, a side note, that of course we also co-publish journals uh, at Springer that are not produced by ourselves, but they are produced outside. It's not many, but it is some journals, and that makes the whole thing then even more uh, complex. Yeah, uh, 
so far, you know, we I've mentioned uh, the four partners and we are talking uh, to the only real life experience is within the Netherlands. It's running since 2000, as a beginning of this year. I think so far very, very uh, good experience, but still quite a few manual processes in place. We are, um, compared to the beginning of the year, a big um, a step ahead in terms of you know, uh, working towards automation. But uh, this is uh, where we are. And uh, you know what are uh, the, the key factors that you need to count in? We need a lot of time to make it work together. So not only creating uh, the principles, but then also in reviewing you know, every month or every quarter, how is it performing, what are uh, the pain points, how can we make it better in the daily works of the deal. And uh, yeah, uh, I think these are uh, the key parts. Now let's look at the challenges, and I think I've touched upon most of them during my talk. The estimation of the articles that are uh, being published or will be published is uh, a challenge, and I think that's also why um, it's very important to mention it is a pilot because um, obviously our uh, whole business model is focused on the publishing uh, output, on the publishing um, intensity, but it is not so easy <laughs> to establish a base. Um, and we will see whether we will be successful uh, when we are now rolling out the deal. So data quality is connected uh, with this, identifying uh, the right articles, the right article types that are actually qualified for open access um, and publishing, yeah, research articles, etc. but certainly not book reviews, etc. So the metadata really needs to be good in, in terms of uh, counting the right articles towards uh, the publishing fee. Um, yeah, the challenge combining budgets um, I think um, I've mentioned already, and uh, yeah, uh, the creation of the automated workflows and uh, the administrate easing the administrative burden. So this is basically experiences so far, um, and uh, yeah, we will take it from there. Thank you very much.